Okay, folks, this is going to help you get set up for the geometry and, of course, exam review uh, that Khan Academy provides. Uh, I believe that this um, set of Wildcat time days that we've been doing is a benefit to you. However, the, the time that we're in here together is by no means enough to fix all misconceptions that you might have or misunderstandings that you might have through your geometry knowledge. So uh, this is tailored towards trying to do that. It's something that you can take outside of this class and continue to work on in preparation for those tests. Uh, again, the geometry test will be on May 1st. Uh, this is what I need you to do. Can just follow the directions here, follow my guide. Um, and you should be able to get set up for this uh, pretty easily. First thing is you're going to go to www.conacademy.org. <clears throat> okay, you're going to come over here to the right hand side where it says sign up. Click sign up. Okay, you're going to have a screen that says uh, learner, teacher, parent, you're a learner. Fill in your birth date, whatever that may be. Okay. Then say, sign up by choosing a username. Okay. Now here you're going to set up your email. So whatever email you want to use. Okay. Um, choose a username. And then create a password. And click sign up. So here it's going to ask you what grade you are in. Just click, you know, 10th grade, 9th grade, whichever one it is. Click continue. Now we're looking for high school geometry, so we're going to click that one. Now if you are, anytime maybe there's a need for you to retake the algebra one, you can click on that and it will sign you up for the, the algebra uh, content. There's also chemistry, uh, biology, um, Down here, I believe there's some government stuff that you can click on. So there's some other, some other, and of course exams that uh, might be beneficial to you. Now, the the geometry one is set up according to the Common Core, which is the set of standards that we use in, in Ohio uh, for these tests. So uh, this should be tailored to the content that we learn uh, within the classroom. So I'm gonna click continue with one course. Okay. So now what's gonna happen? is you see down here in the left hand corner left hand side it says uh, my courses and these are the main concepts um, that are covered on the end of course exam let me give you a quick uh, well i'll just kind of explain what this is and then i'll show you the the rundown of the percent of items that are on the test on the end of course exam uh, but you can click on any one of these say i'm, I'm uh, worried about congruence on that test. I'm going to click on that. And then it's going to take you through this, and it provides you uh, each one of these that has the, the little play button on it. Is it going to be a video uh, providing information for you in video format? And then some of them are um, like documents that you can read. But what I like about this is that it provides you practice questions with feedback. Um, and you work through here, more practice, more practice. And as I get towards the end, uh, there's going to be a unit test. So that's nice, okay? Uh, so if I'm struggling with congruence, and I know that that was a topic that I was really confused about, uh, I can take that unit test uh, and, and get that practice. And then I can go back through and say, okay, well, I was bad at these types of questions on the unit test. And I can come back through here and find those um, topics and watch through those videos. Um, I think this, this is kind of a good theorem concerning quadrilateral properties. I think those are good proofs to look at in preparation for the end of course exam. Uh, another one here would be another grouping here. Um, I can kind of show you eventually uh, some things here that are going to be useful for you to know on the end of course exam. So that's kind of nice. You can, you can do that. You can go back, uh, hit the back button here, high school geometry. 
Uh, and it's going to take you to a different window. It's kind of weird to navigate this a little bit, but um, you can always almost get back to these topics somehow. Uh, and you can you know, obviously click on any of those. And, and here it's broken down to topics uh, that you might want to kind of jump to quickly. Um, but what I want you guys to do is I want you to click on courses here. And I want you to come down to geometry. And it should take you to this page. And this is the current page I was on, but uh, for some of you, it might not have uh, been the page that was loaded for you. But going to Courses and down to Geometry will get you here. And then what I want you to do is I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. It says Start Course Challenge. So this is 30 questions. And they're, they're pretty um, well aligned with your end of course exam. Uh, asking you questions that uh, you can answer, and, and, and I don't mind right now, that, and it's up to the sub, whether you can bounce ideas off of one another and, and kind of collaborate on these, or uh, if she wants you to work solely by yourself on this. I think it's a good idea to work solely by yourself, because that's who's going to take the, I mean, you're not going to collaborate on the end of course exam with one another. Uh, but if you get stuck on something and you need some help, either ask her or ask somebody near you. All right, so these we have to look through this and, and realize maybe uh, some relationships that exist between these two things. To determine this, we know they're not parallel. They intersect. They're coplanar and they intersect. They could be either of these. To determine if they're perpendicular, we would see if their slopes are opposite sign reciprocals or if their slopes multiply together. Give um, negative one. I'm just going to guess here. They look, they look perpendicular. I don't know that they are. Going off looks is a, is a really bad thing to do. Um, go check it, and, and I was right. Um, if you're getting on some of these questions and you can't get past them, okay, uh, I believe if you answer them incorrectly, uh, eventually, obviously these multiple choice ones will you can start getting yeah. Okay, so we got that one. Next question. If there are ones that you type in, I believe, type them in, check, try again, check, try again. Um, if you try enough, okay, so, okay, so I said, I check, get help, or move on. I can move on if, if it's, because there's really some questions on here maybe you haven't covered in your class, so you can move on beyond these questions uh, if you don't know how to do some of them. Uh, but these are very similar to what you're going to see on the end of course exam. So start with that. If you finish with that within the uh, 50 minutes that we have today, uh, the hour that we have, um, go through some of these other sections and improve that, and hopefully this is something that can benefit you uh, beyond today. Um, in regards to the end of course exam, there are a couple things that are key to you. First, make sure that when you are in that uh, testing room that you are provided with your reference sheet. Okay, This is your reference sheet that the state will provide you. Uh, at the top of it, give you your common conversions. Gives us our trigonometry facts of Sokotoa, some right triangles. And down here at the bottom, it gives us some area uh, and volume formulas. Distance formula, this is a common question uh, asked on the end of course exam. Quadratic formula, if you need to factor anything, and this is a probability rule. Um, now, this is the formula sheet that you will get. I'm not saying that everything on here will be used, and I'm not saying that there will be formulas that are not on here. Uh, that you need to know. So there will be some things that maybe you have to go from memory uh, instead of the reference. That This is just here to help you, uh, but not to serve you on every single question. Um, those of you that are maybe interested in proofs or concerned about proofs on the end of course exam, kind of find an example of what a proof would look like on the end of course exam. Uh, kind of like this, okay, so here uh, they start you with a few, they start you with a given, uh, and then they're asking you to, from these statements down here, can you put in the correct information and then provide the correct reason. So uh, that's, that's a proof where you're doing a, a bulk of the work. Um, there are other proofs that are not that involved. So here's a proof, and you see here, all but one reason um, is filled in. So we have to figure out what goes here 
out of these three choices, or sorry, four choices. Um, so that's that's another version of the proof. So, so there's going to be a combination uh, uh, on these test tests of, of uh, types of proofs. But here's the, the blueprint for the Ohio geometry test. You're going to see that anywhere between 33 and 39% of your test is congruence in proofs. Understand what congruency means and understand how to use that throughout proofs. Uh, you'll have 23 or 35 uh, percent being similarity uh, in trigonometry. So scale factors, dilations, Sokotoa, special right triangles, that kind of stuff. As isolated triangle work. 18 24 percent uh, is going to be circles. Now, if you're in my class, this is something we'll talk about next week. Okay, we'll get we'll um, pick up on that and get all that uh, cleaned up for you, and you'll you'll be perfectly fine uh, for that section of the test. And then this last section. Uh, probability again if you're in my class we'll talk about that the week before the test uh, last week of April and we should clear up those things but this is kind of a breakdown of the topics that you're going to see on that test if you are a person that um, is worried about the calculator that is going to be on this test for calculators that you are allowed to use on this test now you're allowed to use your TI-83s, 84s you're allowed to use the TI-30X uh, calculators that most of you have if you don't have a graphing calculator but desmos.com is a calculator that will be integrated on every single question and this is the version of the calculator that you're going to see and what is nice about this is let's say I have these two numbers and I want them both to be divided by four okay, now that probably, that's not what I want maybe I wanted it written this way so this is a calculator that's pretty nice because it will it will show you the way you wrote it by hand. I call this math print. Um, and that's nice because your TI-83, 84, or TI-30s don't do that. And you can make a, a huge error uh, on those calculators just by forgetting parentheses. Okay? Uh, so that's nice. Maybe getting accustomed with that calculator uh, would be a good idea. This will be a, a part of every question that the calculator is allowed to be used on. Um, there is a portion of that test um, that does not use a calculator. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. Um, I hope so that you uh, can work on that review. Um, and if you have any questions over the next couple of weeks uh, in preparation for this, uh, please do not hesitate to come see me. Thank you, and have a wonderful rest of the day.